Although the backrooms has been popular for nearly half of a decade, a majority of viewers have barely scratched the surface. The complexity of the backrooms has no limit and continues to draw me back even to this day, making me realize I never really thought too much into what actually would be the best logical course of thought as to navigating and eventually escaping this pure insanity. That rather than giving up, there is actually a completely new principle that can be followed to navigate and solve not only the fame level 0, but many of the other levels along with it. And along the way, ranking each level by their apparent danger. Welcome, I'm Mr. Mirage, and this is a logical approach to backroom. Before moving forward, I feel like I should mention the size of the backroom's fandom is second only to SCP, which could be foreshadowing to a future video. Hmm, probably not. Regardless, it is literally thousands of articles, and to sort through all of them would drive me insane. Trust me, I tried. So I'm going to stick to referencing only the necessary levels in order to survive. The backrooms, if you're not familiar, started off with a single post of level 0 on 4chan, and eventually spiraled into the place we have it today. In fact, a whole surreal genre seemed to emerge out of nowhere, from liminal spaces to the creation of dream and weird cores respectively. Confused? Well, coincidentally, I created an amazing video explaining these things in depth, but to summarize, a liminal space is the name given for the oddly comforting yet anxious images of often nostalgic locations you can't seem to put your finger on, with the word liminal representing between, as these images are often transitional locations such as stairs, hallways, roads, or essentially any place that you unknowingly pass every day and whether you realize it are imprinted onto your memory, which is why these pictures often tend to feel familiar. Now what does that have to do with the back rooms? Well, in combination with Kane Pixels releasing the first Backrooms found footage to really blow up, Liminal Spaces contributed to the Backrooms going from a single image to thousands of levels and rooms, which, for the record, most of which tend to stem from a specific Liminal Space. The only difference between Liminal Spaces and the Backrooms are Liminal Spaces are almost always empty. The Backrooms don't have that same luxury. Well, here we go, Bob. You ready for the first day on the job? Yeah, I wonder where we're going. Let's see. <laughs> Now in order to logically escape the backrooms, I've put together an acronym to follow because that always seems to work in these situations. Introducing the Labyrinth Principle. The L I've already explained, being obviously that liminality is this entire reality. God damn it, I just realized that rhymes. Anyways, moving on to the A, some who are familiar may be asking, how do you even find yourself stuck in the backrooms? And to answer, we need to become familiar with the term noclip. Now noclip is a term you've probably only heard in gaming meaning to phase through a normally solid object like it wasn't even there, and usually can be enabled via using cheats or hacks, or in the case of sandbox games like Gmod, pressing V. However, no clipping in the backrooms is a very different concept that happens sporadically and at complete random. You can no clip through walls, floors, anything. No clipping is implied to be, in a sense, a glitch in reality that can send the victim spiraling into an unknown void and ending up in an unknown location far away from where they once were. The only way to seemingly increase or decrease the chances of a noclip is to be aware of your environment and keep an eye out for the following. Walls that are a shade darker than normal, or that do not appear to cast a shadow. Doors that did not exist previously and appear to be out of place. And finally, areas that give a sense of unease, where one feels strangely off-put. Noclipping has been known to happen when using things like slides or tunnels as well, so there isn't really a way to avoid it, leading to our A, accepting your fate. Once you're in the back rooms, there isn't a simple fix. No amount of panicking or scraping or banging on the walls is going to bring you back. As I said, no clips are rare, random, and happen quickly, reverting back after you have ended up in your new home. Now that term is a little dark, and you may wonder, does that mean you'll be trapped in the back rooms forever? Well, once you decide to run around in a panic and not think logically and follow our principle, that could very well be your situation. But it is most common you will enter in level 0, unless of course you get lucky enough to end up in the pool rooms or something, which we will go more into later. Now level 0 is of course the most common and popular level of the backrooms, and probably the first one you remember coming into contact with, which is ironic because it is also the lobby of the backrooms, one that despite what the wiki says, frequently will contain entities, that I will be going over specifically later in the video. It is important to act quickly and reach the other levels because you will find yourself quickly losing your mind and withering away in level 0 if you're not careful, which is why I ranked it a 4. 
The best method of quickly escaping level 0 is making your way to a solid wall, and if you don't know what I mean by that, I'm referring to a wall that is on the edge rather than wedged in the middle, a border wall if you will. Then following the trick often used for traditional square mazes, and run your right hand against the wall until you find the exit. Now this varies depending on where in level 0 you end up, but eventually you will be led to a form of exit, or a zone that you can no clip through. They will tell you it is infinite. <laughs> Regardless of this, the backrooms is massive enough to seem like it is infinite, so you are going to need a method to keep yourself alive while you're here. The backrooms guide on the wiki briefly details a list of items that would prove useful during your trek. There are obvious ones like food and water, but then there are ones you might not expect, such as bringing a timer or a watch. It is rumored time can function differently in the backrooms, which to be honest, in my opinion, is the least of your problems. Cause all knowing time is going to do is give you an interstellar schizo meltdown when you realize You've been here for months, and everyone outside probably thinks you're dead, and will start to move on without you. But that's besides the point. God, now I see why it's important to keep your sanity under control. Regardless, even if you've fallen into the back rooms with nothing, it's not over yet. If you're able to make it through level 0, you will eventually fade into level 1, known by the habitable zone, which is known to contain consistent amounts of water and electricity. Level 1 is one of the first zones that is considered safe, although I'd probably keep an eye out for the occasional entity. Regardless, it is important to stock up on the required supplies in this level as crates can be discovered with supplies inside. I would honestly recommend staying inside this level until you have adequate supplies, including a backpack, medical items, a flashlight, and a canteen, which we will be using for later exploration. While many people choose to stay in this level, its size makes it difficult to encounter anyone else. And while building up supplies doesn't necessarily give you a way out, it will achieve one of the most important things in the back rooms, buying yourself time. But while this place may be referred to as habitable, unlike other safe zones, this house has many dangers, especially should the lights turn off. Throughout the video so far, I have mentioned the existence of entities multiple times, along with other adventurers roaming the backrooms alongside you. Now, when I mentioned the main difference between liminal spaces and the backrooms, it was mainly the existence, or lack thereof, entities. Although, that wouldn't be exactly correct, as the majority of levels will be mostly devoid of entities, and especially devoid of other explorers. Level 0 will go as far as to purposely separate you from your group until you have all exited the level, as for what an entity is, that question is as vast as the backrooms itself, having upwards of a thousand different entities you could encounter. But just in case you might be curious, I'll go over the three most common types of entity you could encounter. A smiler is seen with beady eyes and enormous grin, hiding in the darkness, but is known to possibly possess a massive body blending in with the shadows. In every game I've played, most notably Fancy's Escape the Backrooms, smilers are present only in dark areas and cower away from light. However, the wiki states light is a surefire way to agitate the creature, causing an aggressive change in behavior, so it's best to just overall stay out of the dark the best you can. Hounds are like mutated dog-like creatures, who will attack any human that they encounter, but they are known to be easily intimidated. So the logical method here would be to treat it like a grizzly bear, talking in a loud, intimidating tone, and presenting bigger. And finally, skin stealers, which akin to their name, are creatures that will disguise themselves as fellow humans only to kill anyone to fall into their trap. Although known to be hostile when hungry, they are most of the time docile, and my best advice given by the wiki is to identify them and stay away from them. My personal advice overall is to keep my distance from any other wandering humans, especially if they are behaving erratically. But let's say it's too late and you already have one chasing you. It is stated they aren't particularly fast. And while difficult, an average human could probably outrun one, should you of course follow the other steps to keep your energy up. Entities aren't the only thing you might encounter however. Once in a blue moon you may encounter signs of a previous group known by the Major Explorer Group, or Meg for short. <laughs> Massive elongated glob. I'm in! This group may be your saving grace for the backrooms as not only are they able to navigate in and out at will, they also possess bases and supplies as well as an extensive knowledge of the area around you. 
Winding a mag operative or base even if devoid of an exit should be carefully examined for information that can be used for your benefit. However, finding these groups can be extremely difficult. As do the nature of the back rooms, some of them may not exist now. Some might not have even existed at all. But one thing is for sure, in order to survive the back rooms, you might have to be prepared for the fact that you are not alone here. Regardless of this principle, the back rooms is still a lot of empty space, meaning there can be times where you are completely alone wandering through massive hallways and corridors. As frequently the case with extreme isolation, especially in a foreign environment, it is easy to lose a sense of self, and to even begin to hallucinate or panic, two of which are a death sentence in an already hostile environment. Autophobia is an extreme version of this, this is the specific phobia or a morbid fear or dread of oneself or of being alone, isolated, abandoned, and ignored. Inside of the back rooms, you face all of the above, but fortunately there is a solution for this. Rather than water in the back rooms, we often find, oddly enough, almond water, which I'm already pretty unfamiliar on how they milk almonds, not to mention where the water comes from. But in a retrospect, it's probably just almond flavoring. Regardless, there is something about almond water in the back rooms which never really made any logical sense, because almond water is mostly just sugar and carbs. There isn't really a nutritional value. I find it funny, because if I smelled an almond smell coming from any liquid, my first assumption would be that it was cyanide. But regardless, you can find it all over the back rooms, in crates in level 1, running through the pipes in level 4, and even dripping from the ceiling in level 8. It is rumored to repel certain enemies and somehow treat certain ailments and diseases, particularly one that could cause a deformation process into a creature known as the wretch. So when coming into contact with the substance, hoard it as much as possible. Another method of keeping it together would be to utilize the safe levels in the back rooms. Now many levels may seem safe, but in reality, just have a really low entity density. There also exist calming levels such as level 4 and level 37 being the two most popular. Also known as the pool rooms, this level has the most overall calming vibe and it wouldn't hurt to stop and rest a bit, taking some time to relax and calm your mind, while casually exploring the level without the worry of being attacked. It is also crucial these levels be used for healing any ailment or injury your team has sustained, as the amount of levels you will have to run through from zero to the exit is going to be a lot. So make sure to take advantage of these places not only to rebuild your strength, not only to relax, but to overall retain your sanity. Oh, what the hell is that? I don't even that? want to know what that is. It's... Dude. <laughs> As just a quick note during post, I received a comment from a viewer stating the potential of liquid pain, which is something I would have completely forgotten about, as it is super easy to miss over specific items. Similar to levels and entities, items are just as vast, but the potential of liquid pain as a means of defense is significant. Liquid pain, for those who don't know, is a crimson red liquid similar to the previously mentioned almond water that rather than helping someone seems to work similar to acid when coming into contact with skin, and the possibility of essentially making the victim's insides rupture and in some cases even combust. And it was brought to my attention how easily this could be used as a weapon against entities that make it too close. Dowsing the entities in the eyes or any sensitive spots could definitely disorient it long enough for you to make an escape. So I would like to thank this viewer who I of course keep the name censored for privacy reasons. Back to the video. Now thus far the tips have been extremely general so they were meant to be tips to follow as you go. The next three tips are going to be how to navigate each level that I have sorted into categories for convenience purposes. Eventually leading to the most logical way to find an exit. Moving on with our eye, it is crucial to internalize your surroundings. Now, what I mean by that is the back rooms are purposely designed to be disorienting and trick you into thinking a method out is impossible, but it isn't simply as complicated as you think. Despite everything in the back rooms, it is still made of rooms and corridors, which still have to follow a semi-basic form of geometry. For example, level 0 is non-Euclidean, which in layman's terms simply means not a perfect shape but a majority will still contain some resemblance of walls, floors, and ceilings. So if you keep note what direction you are heading in, along with using an age-old trick known as Tremo's algorithm. I'm gonna go ahead and pause there. For people who don't know what Tremo's algorithm is, it is essentially requires something to mark the walls with. Simply choose a path to follow until you meet another fork. Then mark the beginning and end of that path on the wall. Then when encountering one of your marks again, prioritize paths that you haven't marked. And if you have to go down a path a second time, mark it again. 
and for the future, refrain from taking paths with two marks. Backtrack out and mark dead ends, and if you continue down paths that only have one mark or less, you will eventually find your destination. Using an age-old trick known by Tremo's algorithm to navigate through areas that seem to be easy to get lost in, because at the end of the day, you are still inside of a building for the majority of levels, albeit a very odd building, and you can use this to your advantage, as eventually if you continue heading a direction, you will find the outmost wall that if followed with the right hand trick from before, will lead you to where you want to be. But what exactly are we looking for? Apart from using oddly shaded floors to no clip, analyzing doors that look different than others such as a ballroom style door in a parking garage along with elevators or fire exits is the most reliable way to progress levels. As mentioned before, the back room is a liminal space, a place you're transitioning through. So treating certain levels like their real life counterparts can be essential for progressing forward through a majority of the inside levels. But what about the ones that seem to have completely created their own environment? As early as level 7, you will encounter levels that resemble nature rather than man-made structures, making everything way more difficult. This can be anything from an ocean in the level of Thalassophobia to vast wheat fields in level 10, in which a similar strategy of looking for what doesn't belong, such as following dirt roads or entering greenhouses or buildings, with our N for this one representing navigation via noticing anomalies. Overall, it is risky as it can send you to a level you aren't ready for, but it is the best chance you have. The biggest downside of the back rooms is it is extremely unpredictable and overall unfair to navigate. The labyrinth principle, while giving you a chance, doesn't guarantee anything, especially when it comes to the next concept. Heaven's, Heaven's waiting. waiting. Alright. I'll bite. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. It's weird core. Since we are now on our final letter, it is important to recap real quick. Now that we are familiar with the context of liminality, accepted that we are in the back rooms, bought ourselves valuable time by gathering resources, gained the understanding that you are in the presence of other beings, good and bad, retained our mental stability and utilized those safe levels along with internalizing your surroundings and noticing anomalies to make it through a majority of the levels, you will come to realize that unless you follow this last step, you might as well just be prolonging the inevitable. Yes, I am referring to finding an exit. Now, I feel like it is worth mentioning that the only thing more harder to navigate and more unstable than the backrooms itself is the backrooms wiki, especially recently. I frequently noticed many pages had to be rewritten and almost made worse. Many levels were deleted entirely and others left in an unrecognizable state, so finding an exit is harder than ever before and requires us to theorize a way out. But I suppose that kind of fits the theme. Eventually, I would be forced to look into a YouTuber that specializes in the backrooms, known by Brugley, who thankfully made a whole video on theorized exits of the backrooms, the easiest of which seems to lie ironically in the false end, which, if you don't know, is a library that has no official entrances and is just said to be entered at random, and without proper guidance can lead you to being sent to the infinite stairwell, which is name I cannot pronounce which will continue on forever, trapping you in a false end for all of eternity. However, it is theorized that running truend.exe on the computer in the center can lead you to the now purged mythical level 3999, which is a massive arcade that contains not only games from the real world, but serves as a safe zone and eventually a way back to reality. Now, I, like I said, it gets very shady at this point because of the current state of the wiki, but there are also many other exits such as the absolute infinity of the unknown, level upside down, and the backrooms museum, but level 3999 seems to be the most straightforward that doesn't involve plummeting from the sky, although I wouldn't be surprised if you could make a makeshift parachute that could lead you to a safe landing, but overall, I don't think the backrooms are meant to be exited which is why I think so many people inside of it have just accepted their fate and began a new life inside the backrooms. And with that, we have completed the Labyrinth Principle. If you enjoyed my logical approach to the backrooms, make sure to hit that subscribe button down below, and let me know if you would like to see me take a logical look to any more horror fandoms. I'm looking at you, SCP. And for anyone wanting a part 2 of my analog horror video, I will be starting on that promptly after this video is live, so stay tuned. Well, that was quite an adventure. I'm sad to see you go, but don't worry, this doesn't have to be the last time we see each other. I got another cool video, just for you. Hurry, the video's almost over.